So core pads have been around since Cubase 8, and they haven't seen a great deal of change in that time. So Cubase 13 has updated them a bit. They're not night and day different. There's a few extra bits and pieces, and mostly it's a change of appearance and making things a little easier to work with because it was always a little kind of two menus away as far as changing settings was concerned. So now we have a toolbar and a little more accessibility. The first thing you may notice about them is they now have these little colored bars. And this is analysis of how suitable each chord is. By default, this is put into cadence mode, which I'm not sure is the most useful mode. So let's just look at changing that. So the default here is the chord editor will be here. And you can click here and change that to list. But then the algorithm here, I would change that to common notes because it shows you how many common notes you have between the chord you just played and the chord you're about to play. And we can see they are colored appropriately depending on how many notes they are and which note it is, etc. Um, the colors aren't amazing if, like me, you're colorblind, but they are at least reasonably useful to see that you're going to see, let's say, more significant change if you choose that chord. Then if you change that, and also you will find that if you click another chord, those colors change depending on how many common notes they have. So that's kind of a dynamic thing that will change as you go. And you can investigate that further. So for instance, if you press the A minor here, you can see other chords which will be common. And we can see with the D minor, we've got one note common and it's highlighting that. So it's just reasonably useful in terms of if you're looking for somewhere to jump, you can jump to something which will maybe be an appropriate color, etc. Now, most of this was already present. So we've got the preset, which is loaded up, which in this case is the first one on the list. Uh, the key we're in, so we can just change the root key. So now pressing the same keys on the keyboard will give us the same progression, but in a different key. I quite liked it in A, so let's stick with that. We've got the normal preset handling here. And then things such as piano player, which most people never delve deep enough to find because it was a couple of menus deep. So you can pick what kind of player you've got. So the player here can make a difference to the way the chords are played. So by default, it will be on piano player. But if you go to guitar player, those same chords will be played in a different way. And in this particular progression, you can see that all of those with the bass note, basically the bass note is being ignored. And if we go for basic player, we get some more. Uh, basic and different so even though we're getting some different variations there so let's stick with piano player now the chord voicing style depending on the preset you've got depending on the chords you've got and the way you've got the pads set may change what's happening but certainly with this particular set I know that it doesn't change a great deal so we're going to stick with that now in terms of that there, we've got plain chords, we've got patterns, and we've got sections. So at the moment, we've just been having this plain chords kind of vibe. If we go for pattern, we can either load or have a preset which has pattern in there. So this has got a pattern in there, and we should see You've got some other ones, so we've got guitar pattern, etc. So there's a there's a few presets in here. But let's just try analog synth ups. So you get the idea with that. But it's also possible to drag your own MIDI onto this area, so you can just make up a, a particular pattern, drag it on here, and then start that. So I'm just gonna prepare just a little bit MIDI and then drag it on there so you see it in action. So here we have the part I've just recorded. So it's just a simple kind of Italo house, 90s house piano kind of thing. <laughs> 
And then you can just drag this onto here. So drop this MIDI part, you see, we drop it there. And now when we play a chord pad, So you've got all that, you can do that as much as you like. Obviously you can do it with as many complicated things as you want. So it's really easy to create custom patterns that you can just use on these different chords. But there are of course uh, lots of presets as well. So I'll leave you to explore those, but they're just little bits of MIDI, etc. So between the chords which you pick from the chord pads and then the, the patterns that you play, you can end up with something pretty unique even if you're using nominally the same chords as someone else. It's also possible to load up some of the many MIDI loops which are available. So in fact, if you click that button there, you end up with these, all these MIDI parts which you can use. So these MIDI loops can be used to play any of those parts as well. So there's a whole load if you can't create any parts yourself or you're looking for a bit of inspiration. You can play around with these and again add those to the core pads that you've got. Another new feature here in Cubase 13 is step input for chord track from the chord pad. So this works possibly the opposite way you may think. So what we're doing is we're taking chords from here and putting them onto the chord track. Previously, the only way you'd do that is by clicking and dragging, which was always slightly awkward, particularly because this is always at the bottom of the screen. If you're on a big screen, it's a lot of distance to go depending on where your core track is in your project. You can now do it with step input. There's a couple of caveats. So firstly, when you turn it on, you can see the step input cursor appears, which is consistent with the new MIDI step input. You can only do it a bar at a time. So I'm moving with the cursor keys from one bar at a time. So at the moment, it seems to be stuck on only one bar at a time, which is slightly disappointing, but there you go. Now, as soon as I play, either by clicking on here or by playing on the keyboard, the chord gets transferred. So it's pretty easy to add in the chords that I want. And then I can edit them if I want. For instance, I can turn step input off. So once they're there, you can edit them pretty easily. So let's just put this one to there, one to there. So it just makes it a little bit quicker than having to do it before. So now we've got, let's just mute the terrible keyboard part. And then you've just got building blocks. You can build up pretty easy. So it makes it a bit easier to transfer things from there to here. Whereas previously, say it was just drag and drop, which was a little bit painful. You can insert chords. So let's say you've got a few of these in a row you've decided to use. And then you want to insert something different here. So you can put your step input on. As long as I click this here, make sure move insert mode is clicked on. Then you'll see these chords will move later on. And away we go. So this, it's not night and day different. It's just a little bit easier to use than it previously was. The rest of the changes just mean that all of this is available. So these are the kind of things which were already previously available and we can have access to this because often there was sort of spare space. So it's quite useful to have this and you can even see your circle of fifths uh, should you want to be concerning yourself with that kind of thing and I'm pretty sure if we change yeah we get this nice rotation display as it goes around so as you go around the circle of fifths you can see that and we can even change that to minor so we've got C minor there and then if we change that it will rotate around to F minor there and so on The last thing to look at here is we've got this display settings. Now, typically this would change your toolbar, but in this case, change the core pads display. So we can see we can pick whether they are Roman numerals, which is useful, particularly if you want to think in that and you want to do some analysis of what's happening here rather than just be the notes. You can also go for the Nashville number system if you want to, which is largely the same thing, just uh, presented in a different way and secondary type as well. So we can have that and you can see those secondary types there even if they are quite small. Keyboard or grid pad layout. Personally, I prefer keyboard because I generally would have them assigned so I can play them as I just accidentally did. Uh, and you can pick the number of 
pads, etc. But also you can turn those colors on and off, the voicing indicators on and off, and pattern play progress as well. So with the pattern play progress turned on, when you have a pattern assigned, as we will redo here, so let's just drag that onto here. When you play a pattern, uh, you see the pattern progress. So you get an idea of where you've got to be. So you get an idea in where you are, which is you know pretty common to a lot of performance-based and pattern-based uh, sequencing, etc. So this is nothing novel or particularly new, but it is quite useful to be able to do that. So that's the changes made to core pads in Cubase 13. As I've said previously, they've been largely the same since Cubase 8, and most of these changes aren't really night or day stuff. It's more sort of quality of life improvements, as people say. The added features of having these indicators of how suitable, in quotes, the chords are and also step input is nice, but none of this is night or day stuff. If you weren't really a chord pads person before, I don't think this is going to change your mind, but if you do use chord pads or thinking about it, then this hopefully will make your life a little bit easier using them. There's certainly something which I've made use of a few times, including once in a very weird live performance thing that I was doing. And they're worth taking a look if this kind of thing has interested you, particularly going through the presets, because there are quite a few of them. And there's interesting chord progressions in there, which hopefully will inspire you to make more music, which after all, is what this is all about. As ever, hope you found this useful, and we'll see you again soon.